we're supposed to write this equation y equals mx plus b, where m is what? The slope, and b is the intercept. Okay, so can anybody tell me anything about this equation? Yes? The slope is negative, I mean the y-intercept is negative 3. Y-intercept is negative 3, so I can just pl plug that in there. Negative 3, right? So we have that much, y equals something something minus 3. What else? Katie? Um, you need to figure out the slope uh -huh. by subtracting um, the first point from the second point. Okay, so that looks like um, negative 2 minus negative 3. Does that sound like what, what you did there, kids? Or what you would do? Negative 2 minus negative 3? Yes. Over, what would that be over? When you're calculating the slope, that uh, these two need to come from the same point, these need to come from the other point, and they do. This comes from the point uh, 3, negative 2, 3, negative 2, and 0, negative 3 we have there. The negative 2 minus negative 3 is negative 2 plus 3, which is 1, over 3 minus 0, which is 3, so that is the slope, as Caden said, we have the slope 1 third times x. Can we find the slope in any other way? Charlie? Um, you can count to the right three. Right three. And up one. Up one. So now we know what the slope is. The denominator is the over part, right? Three in the denominator, positive one in the numerator. Just make sure to keep track of whether it should be positive or negative. In this case, they're both positive because I move to the right, which is positive, and I move up, which is positive. If I ever have to move left or down, that would be negative. If I start here and I move to the left, that's negative three, and I move down, that's negative one, right? So that'd be negative one over negative three, but what's that equal to? One over three. One over three, negative divided by negative. All right. How was that one? Make sense? Okay. Ready for twelve? I think it is. Twelve. Oh, a constrictor. All right. So eighteen inches long at birth. That's what it is. How old is it when it's born? Eight. How old is it? Zero. It is zero. At the instant that it is born, it is zero anything. It's zero seconds, zero minutes, zero hours, zero years old. It is zero. Uh, when it's born, it grows eight inches per year. Eight inches per year. Uh, write the equation represents the length y in feet of both trillion years. X. X represents years, it says. X is years. Y is inches. This is, I mean, if I were to ask you to write a story about one of those equations from like a week back or so, if I were to write an equation, I'd ask you to write a story. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. Mm -hmm. story. This is exactly the kind of story we might have gotten. It would have been a perfect story, right? Some snake grows at eight inches per year, and it starts at 18 inches. How would this equation look? Ready? Y equals <coughs> 8x plus 18. Does that make intuitive sense? If you just look at that equation, does it make sense that that would tell you how long the snake is after x years? After zero years, how long is it? 18. Yeah, there's 18 inches. After one year, just use your brains, but after one year, if it grows 8 inches per year and starts at 18 inches, how long should it be? 26 inches, right? Well, let's see, there's 18, right? Always starting at 18, 18 doesn't change. 18's always 18, it just starts at 18. And we add on eights for every year that it goes, uh, that it lives, right? So eight plus 18 would be 26. After two years, it should be eight inches longer and eight inches longer than that, right? Be eight inches and another eight inches, that's eight times two plus 18. This is for sure, it's gotta be the equation that tells us how long this snake is after x years. The size is 16 on the 18. It almost doubles in size in two years. Okay, and number 13.
give us two points, the point two comma five and the point zero comma five. Interesting. Why is that interesting? Because the y is five. The y is five for both, right? Okay. And number twelve, y was supposed to be two. Is that interesting? Mm -hmm. Oh, y is supposed to be eight. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's jump back. Eight, not inches. Let's tell us how many inches it grows. Oh, so we need to. How do we? How do we change this function so that it tells us how many feet long? It If I tell you how many inches something is, how would you figure out how many feet it is? If I told you something was 24 inches, how many feet was that? Two, two feet. How do we, so how do we take inches and turn, convert it into feet? Divide it by 12. Divide it by 12. Okay. Uh, so, let's see. We need, first of all, to tell you, tell you how many feet it is when it's born. How many feet is it when it's born? 18 inches is how many feet? One and a half. One and a half, right? One foot and six more inches. And how many feet is eight inches? two-thirds of a foot, okay, for every year that goes by. So we're given the point two five, the point zero five. We're writing this equation here, y equals mx plus b, where this is the slope, this is the y-intercept. Okay. Can you tell me either one of those, the slope or the y-intercept? The y-intercept's five. The y-intercept's five, how do you know the y-intercept's five? Y-intercept is 5, because there is the point that is on the y-axis, and that line must go through it, because, well, that's what it said. Okay, now what? Tell me what the slope is. difference in the y values and the difference in the x values, right? Because the slope is the change in y or the change in x. And if you want the change in something, that would be subtraction. Right? Take the end minus the beginning, right? So we could take, uh, we could think of this as the beginning, right? Because the x is smaller. That's what I like to do. It doesn't matter. We can take 5 minus 5, right? 5 minus, or sorry, this is the beginning. This is the end. 5 minus 5 over two minus zero. What do we get? Zero over two. What's zero over two? Undefined. Zero. Oh, zero divided by two. Zero. zero. Yeah, I know it's kind of tricky, but if you take zero things right, and divide them among two people, that can make sense. Zero if I have no cookies. I divide them up between me and Jaren. We both have zero cookies. Zero cookies. But if I have two cookies and I try to divide them up, divide them up among zero people, I can't. Yeah, I, I have to give some to somebody. Like, how do I? It doesn't make any sense. Okay. It makes more sense to take zero things and divide. We just both have nothing. Right. So this is zero. But side note, reminder: two over zero is undefined. Anything over zero. Okay, so our slope is zero, so we have zero x plus five. What's zero times x? Zero. zero. So y equals five. Just y always equals five. Okay. 
matter where we are on this line, y is just 5. And you can see two examples, y is 5 here, y is 5 here, y will be 5 for any point, any x value you choose, the y will be 5. y equals 5 is the equation from that line. Okay. And if we had done this math and found some other slope, we put that slope there, right? Came out to be 3 fifths. Intercepts are. It's a matter of <coughs> plugging it in, right? So, what's the equation for this line? Monica? Negative 4 thirds x plus 5. X. Did you say x? No, but 4 thirds x. We do need that x. points, we have to have a place to put x, and then we get y with that x, and then we have points to plot the line. Okay, well this one, a little more work. We can write a way to tell what part of the equation. Y-intercept. So y-intercept, which is? Negative 2. Negative 2, we got an x of 0 there, so the y-intercept is negative 2. So we need the slope, how are we going to find the slope? Questions? Good? Good to go. Ready to move on? Ready to take some notes. Here we go. Okay, what is this? Yeah. Call it the slope formula, sure. Okay. I'm going to take this slope formula and I'm going to create a different form of a linear equation. To give you an idea of what I'm talking about, one form that we've been using so far is this form. Remember what we call this one? Slope intercept form. It's a good name. Well, it's an accurate name. Because what we see in there, we've talked about it many times today, are the slope and the y intercept. Slope intercept form. Okay, so here's how I'm going to create a new form of the linear equation. Uh, what's going to happen if I multiply this side by the entire parentheses x2 minus x1? What's going to happen? First of all, let's, let's establish that if I multiply by this thing, whatever this thing is, I need to do what? Over here. Multiply it on the same thing, thing, right? Okay. So on this side, we just have yeah, whatever. But something interesting should happen over here. Where else do you see x2 minus x1? Um, on the bottom. Right. Uh, on the bottom, um, y2 minus y1. So the so denominator of this fraction, right? What's that? Will they cross each other out? They will, because they're identical. No matter what they are, What's really going to happen here is, I could write this like over 1 if I want. And we can call it cross canceling, which I don't like the word cancel because it's so vague. But uh, we do get x2 minus x1 divided by x2 minus x1. Whenever I plug in here, I'd have to plug in here. Whenever I plug in here, I'd have to plug in here. I get the exact same number here and here. This came out to be a 5. This would be a 5. If 5 divided by 5 would be 1. one. If this came out to be a 7, this came out to be a 7, and 7 divided by 7 is also 1, right? So x, 
my x2 minus x1 gets divided by x2 minus x1, and you just have a 1 there, right? y2 minus y1 times 1 divided by 1. Really, all that's left on this side is y2 minus y1. And on this side, you just have this stuff. So it's going to look like this. y2 minus y1 equals m times x2 minus x1. I just put the m on the left side. It doesn't really make a difference, does it? Nope. Multiplying one thing times another, you can flip around the order. Okay. I'm going to do a couple things before I uh, reveal the next line here. First of all, if you think about it, here I have the slope. So if we assume we know the slope, then we know m. x2 minus x1, those are just the x's from two different points, right? Yeah. So then I can plug those two in. And here are the y's from those same two different points. And if I plug those in, there's, nothing, there's no variables here. That's not the equation of a line. So the equation of a line needs a y and an x, so I can plug things in for x and get things out for y. See what I'm saying? We need some x. We need a place for x and a place for y. We need a place for x to go in and y, y to come out. So what we do is we're going to cross out these two. We're going to use those as the variables. So now we have the slope, okay? And this x and this y, well, there's just an x and a y from any point, right? From any point, the same point. Pick a point, put the x there, you put the y there. So y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 is what we have what we call the point slope form. And it's an accurate name, just like the slope intercept form. Because point slope, there's a point. The point is right here. Here's the x and the y of a point. And here's the slope. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So if I ever need to write the equation of a line, given a point and the slope, but I'm not necessarily given the y-intercept, like that very specific point, that I would use the point slope for. Okay, so let's give a real basic example. You see what's going on here. Here we have a point and the slope, right? And so we use the point slope. Point slope for. So, uh, like I said, that's the slope. So on this side, we're going to have five thirds. Well, this x and this y, those are the x and the y that are the, the variables, the input and the output of this function. On this side, I'll have y minus, what do you think? Y minus what? Four, because we have a point. And like I said, this x and this y, this x1 and y1, just like you're used to from the slope formula, they are from the point. They are an x and a y from the point. Notice there's a positive 4 there, positive 3 comma positive 4, we get y minus 4 equals 5 thirds x, 5 thirds times the parentheses x minus what? 3. 3. Sorry, to get it. Okay. Here we go. Like we have, uh, we could use it like this. We could plug in x and then solve for y, but it'd be kind of a hassle, right? We might as well kind of rewrite it in slope intercept form. Which just means I need to get y by itself, right? So I'll add 4 to both sides. So y equals, how about if I, before I rewrite this, how about if I do what would this 5 thirds do? 5 thirds times the x, 5 thirds, 5 thirds times the negative 3. 5 thirds x minus, what will I get five, when I get to 5 thirds times the negative 3? Negative 5, right? Let's see what I here. 5 thirds times negative 3 over 1. 3 divides 3, we're left with negative 1. 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. And there's that plus 4 from the other side. So the final equation is y equals 5 thirds x minus 1. You should have that copy down. It's a nice example you could use to help you with your homework. for example. Any questions about that? Before we move on to some other thing, Cadence? Okay, never mind. Never okay. Mind. Uh, never mind there. I know that it's pretty far down there. Sorry about that. Alright. Now I'm 
giving you the same kind of information in a little bit of a different way. Just like with the boa constrictor, the boa constrictor problem from the homework last time, they very sneakily gave you the y-intercept and the slope by telling you that it's eight inches, 18 inches when it's grown, grown when it's born, and it grows eight inches per year. Mm -hmm. Doing the same kind of thing here. I'm giving you a point and slope. So this first step, uh, maybe this will help. Talk about x and y. This equation, I should be able to tell it x somethings and get out y somethings. What does x represent? Materials. The time in seconds I've been able to oh. second. It's a second. But what does y represent? Cheerios. Cheerios. I mean, Cheerios. This chunk of a guy. So, what uh, I'm telling you here that, that you can definitely find a slope or a point somewhere in there. You can tell me which either one. Um, the slope is 9 over 5. Yes, 9, right? 9 is the y, the y value, 9 is Cheerios. 5 is time, right? So it's, it's the, the horizontal, the vertical there, delta y, delta x, right? How much does y change? Well, 9. It changes 9 Cheerios. How much does x change? 5. 5 seconds go by 9 Cheerios. So we have a slope of 9 fifths. What about that point? Twenty-six. Twenty seconds have gone by. That's x, right? X is seconds. Fifty-six Cheerios have been consumed. That's y. Y is Cheerios. So we bring in the slope intercept or the uh, point-slope form. Y minus y one equals m times x minus x one. So we have y minus what? Fifty-six, because that's the y value, right? Y minus y one, fifty-six. The slope? Nine fifths times x minus twenty. There we go. So we have y minus, you know, let's raise this Let's add fifty-six to both sides. Y equals. Let's as Grady told us last time, distribute the nine fifths. We get nine fifths x. What do you get if you're gonna, this is a little bit tricky, what do you get if you multiply 9 fifths by negative 20? Four, uh, four there, yeah. 36? 36, almost. Negative 36. Negative 36. Plus 56. So, put everything together we can. Negative 36 plus 56. <laughs> Of course, and that's it. Uh, so just a final thought here. We can see that every nine, uh, well, every five seconds, uh, nine Cheerios are eaten. Uh, with this 20 here, well, that would mean that our y-intercept is 20, right? Or when we plug in zero for x, we get 20, which means that uh, Declan must have started off having already eaten 20 Cheerios when I started my stopwatch, I guess. Uh, so that's it. And if you just watched that, then uh, you should tell me, and I'll give you extra credit. All right, bye.